What's going on, everybody? I hope you're enjoying your Sunday afternoon so far. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm bringing you the BK, BKN game recap for the Brooklyn Nets as they played their final game of the NBA regular season at Barclays Center against the Philadelphia 76ers, who ironically, they're going to be playing in the first round of the NBA playoffs. <laughs> this game was just pretty much a whole bunch of backups. There's really not a lot of in-depth stuff to talk about because a lot of the players that played in this game for the Nets are pretty much not going to be part of the team in terms of the who's going to be playing in the playoffs. But you got to have a nice look at some of the players on the Nets, some of the younger players who the Nets might be looking to develop going into next year and possibly be part of the team next year. Whereas Philadelphia, the 76ers had a couple of their players that they that are going to be part of their uh, regular uh, part of the playoffs going forward. You know, guys like Dwayne Dedman, Dwight, guys like uh, McDaniels, Jaden McDaniels, Paul Reed, even Shake Milton. These guys are going to be playing pretty much in the playoffs going forward. And the Nets end up getting their doors blown off in this game tonight to this afternoon against the 76ers by the final score of 134 to 105. It was not even close. This was actually a eight-point game at the end of the third quarter, where the Nets were only trailing by eight points when it was 192. But then the Nets, just their defense just completely fell apart, and Philadelphia just absolutely dismantled them all over the place. Philadelphia ended up shooting 53% from the court. They had 50 rebounds, 31 assists. They had 10 steals and 6 block shots. Nets only had 42 rebounds, so they got out-rebounded by 8. They only had 22 assists, got out-assisted by 9. They had 6, six steals, out-stealed by, by 4. And they had the same amount of blocks. Nets also turned the ball over 18 times and gave up 22 personal fouls, while the Sixers turned the ball over 13 times and gave up the ball and only committed 22 personal fouls. Nets shot 42% from the court, 38% from the three-point line. They got to the line 28 times, made 23 of them. Philadelphia got the line 19 times, 14 were made. They shot 74% from the free throw line. Nets shot, uh, Nets shot 82%. Cam Thomas once again showed you what he can do when his offense is pretty much going off, where he scored... 46 points on 16 of 29 shooting, 6 of 8 from the three-point line. He went to the line eight times, made all eight of them. He had two, two, he ended up having two rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block, four turnovers though, and one personal foul in 43 minutes. So Thomas just showed you what he can do offensively, but the problem with Thomas, like I mentioned and others have mentioned, he's a one-dimensional player right now where he could light it up from the court, but he doesn't really offer a whole lot when it comes to any other parts of the game. Dayron Sharp had five points in the game with three personal fouls, two block shots, two four assists, ten rebounds though. He was two for six from the court for 25 minutes. Yuta Watanabe had nine points, two turnovers, one personal foul, two block shots. He had seven rebounds, one assist. He was two for six from the three-point line and three for eight from the free from the from the court in 33 minutes. Michael Bridges, though, he actually did start in this game, but he only played four seconds as he wanted to keep his NBA best record of 392 games straight played going. And that's exactly what he did, where he played in four seconds committed a foul, and then he went out of the game. And he has now played in 392 consecutive games in the NBA, which is a be is, is an NBA best so far. But obviously he wasn't playing. In terms of the guys off the bench, David Duke Jr. and Raquan Gray, who I spoke about yesterday. Raquan Gray, he ended up almost having a triple-double today. He did commit five personal fouls and he had four turnovers. But he had 16 points in the game on 6 of 12 shooting and 2 of 5 from the three-point line. He also went to the line two times and made both of his shots. In 35 minutes, he had 7 assists and 9 rebounds with a blocked shot included. David Duke Jr., who was one of the developmental players the Nets have had their roster the past couple of seasons, who was in the G League, he had 15 points, 4 personal fouls, and 3 turnovers. He had 3 steals, 4 assists with 8 rebounds. He was 5 for 6 from the free throw line. He was 0 for 4 from the 3-point line and 5 for 13 from the court in 45 minutes. And Drew Smith, one of the reserve guards whom they picked up 
for the Miami Heat. He had two points and three assists with one steal and four personal fouls with one turnover. He had four rebounds, four, all four defensive-minded. Went to the free throw line twice, made both of them. 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 3, 0, no three-point shots in 23 minutes. Those were all the stats breakdown, and like I mentioned, this was just pretty much a game where you got to see and got a look at the younger players on this team. There was no Embiid, no Harden, no Maxi, no Harris. You know, there was none of the starters, no DeAnthony Melton, none of the starters for the Philadelphia 76ers, and ditto for the Nets, no Dinwiddie, no Harris, no Curry, no Bridges, no Johnson, no Dinwiddie, no Dorian Finney-Smith, no Claxton. All their key players didn't play in this game because both these teams will be matching up in the first round of the NBA playoffs. The schedule hasn't been released yet on when exactly they're going to start playing one another during the regular season. But right now, the Nets finished their regular season at 45-37. and 37. They finished 23-18 and 18 at home, which is actually a lot better than I thought this team would be after the what happened at the end of the season, I mean, during the middle of the season when they had to trade Durant and Irving, thought maybe this team would just go into an absolute downward spiral. And yes, it took them some time to really start adjusting as an NBA team and as a franchise going forward. But at the same time, the Nets still managed to eke out 45 wins, close to a 50-win season, even after putting together a makeshift team at the NBA trade deadline and pretty much having... A team that needed to gel with one another for pretty much the last couple of months of the season. <laughs> but like I mentioned, you got to see just the tastes for some of these younger players on the team. Like a Cam Thomas, like a Deron Sharp, like a David Duke Jr., like a Drew Smith, like a Raquan Gray. You got to see these younger players on the team show what they could potentially do. And if they're part of the roster next year or if they might be part of the G League team next year, we know how explosive Thomas is from the court. He showed it again today. 46 points, but until Thomas is able to develop more to his overall basketball game, it's going to be very difficult for the coaching staff and Jacques Vaughn to be able to trust him on the court because of the fact that he's a liability on the defensive end of the court. He commits a lot of turnovers, and he doesn't do a lot in terms of facilitating the basketball and rebounding. He's pretty much a one-dimensional player, and I hate saying that because I think a lot of Cam Thomas, but the problem is he just can't give this team anything else, but his offensive skill set is so impressive, the Nets might have to, going into next season, give him some impressive minutes, and who knows, maybe if the Nets need a spark off the bench for some offensive firepower, you could potentially see number 24 on the court for the Brooklyn Nets because of how much he could put the ball into the basket. I like what I saw from Raquan Gray. He gave him some good low post presence. He had nine rebounds, three of them offensive, and he was seven assists. He was able to put together a solid game, albeit it's against second and third teamers of the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, Patty Mills, he's pretty much just been like a mentor on the on the bench. He's a guy that's just pretty much there to help young and tutor the younger players on that team. He did have 12 points off the bench, 3 of 11 from the court, 2 of 9 from the three-point line. Got to the free throw line seven times and made four free throws. He also had two rebounds and two assists and a steal with four turnovers and three personal fouls into 35 minutes. 3 for 11 from the court. <laughs> like I mentioned. The NBA regular season is over. It's done. 82 games in the books, and now the Nets are going to take their chance going into the NBA playoffs against the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid, James Harden, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, Shake Milton, DeAnthony Melton, Jaden McDaniels, Paul Reed, Dwayne Dedman. All these guys are waiting for the Brooklyn Nets going into the playoffs. Uh, so... We'll have to wait and see how this Nets team is going to be able to go into the playoffs and how they're going to be able to play. This is not going to be an easy series. Everybody is picking the 76ers to beat the Nets. Would it be a shock if the 76ers wiped the floor with the Nets? No. But honestly, and I'm going to give you my prediction. You're going to be seeing my video coming out tomorrow about what my predictions are for the Nets and the Sixers going into this playoff series that's going to be happening next week. I do believe the Nets are going to be able to compete 
with the 76ers. Is it going to be easy? No, but we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen. But either way, the regular season is done. After everything that this basketball team has gone through, they managed to finish with at least a 45-37 and 37 record in the season, 23-18 and 18 at home, and the Nets... Now, get ready for the first round of the NBA playoffs as the sixth seed and the Philadelphia 76ers obviously will have the home court advantage, them being the three seed. But that is your BKN game recap for the Brooklyn Nets as they played their final regular season game at Barclays Center against the Philadelphia 76ers and they got blown out in a meaningless game, 134 to 105. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this game today, if you were impressed with some of the younger players and... Of course, wrap up. What did you think about the Brooklyn Nets overall in terms of how they played during the regular season? Hit that like button if you haven't already and give a sub to the new from to NYG Jeffy T85 for more news, updates, chatter, and game recaps surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. And of course, turn on that bell for notifications on when the next video or short will be dropping on the channel surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. And like I mentioned a little bit ago. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about the game today, if you were impressed by some of the younger players that were in the game today, how they played, and your recap of the 82-game regular season for the Brooklyn Nets heading into the NBA playoffs. Thank you very much, everybody. All of you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take it easy, and let's go Brooklyn Nets. As always, it's a Nets world, and we're all just living in it.